So that's you know, just food for thought and what is the perception on market access. And um, I would like to, uh, to ask you, Dries, because it seems that uh, you, are you, are, you are part of uh, a region which is making access as a hardship for pharma. <laughs> um, to comment a little bit on, you know, we, we have a perspective of standards and, and um, instruments that we take in consideration when we as assess a new technology, and I will refer to new technologies for everything. Um, but sometimes, over the time, the payer realizes that the value that was proposed initially by the manufacturer um, is not really reflected in the results that they see on, on large cohorts of usage of such a product or a technology. I know that, that Haas has an interesting experience into this, and I will be very, very interested to find out uh, what you're taking about this and what France has done in this respect. Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me to this uh, interesting debate, and thank you for the results of this uh, interesting uh, uh, survey. Uh, but interestingly, the France wasn't too difficult in terms of uh, discussions and access to the market, apparently, uh, compared to the other uh, member states. Uh, coming back to the point you raised concerning the, the standards uh, in terms of market access, and uh, I'm part of uh, uh, its no tradition uh, at the HIS to have a predominant clinical evaluation uh, at the contrary of some other uh, authorities acting in terms of health technology assessments. Uh, it is true that uh, we are very demanding in terms of clinical data and clinical data based on relevance of what is measured and relevance of the results. And, uh, Con taking into consideration, consideration the fact that we have more and more means to treat, diagnose, uh, or prevent diseases, of course, this level is increasing every year. Uh, in terms of uh, 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 relevance of this uh, information, uh, it's first of all at the initial evaluation. Uh, we have many examples for which we have uh, clinical data presented to first evaluation uh, for which we do not see uh, any relevance because statistically significant results cannot be translated in some cases in clinically relevant results. Uh, in other circumstances, it's related to the population uh, which has been included in clinical trials. Surprisingly, we see some strategies of clinical development uh, with at the end uh, interpretation of the data which is not really applicable or extrapolable to the real world uh, uh, circumstances. Uh, so that's already a first step at the initial evaluation. Uh, a lot of questions concerning the, uh, the point on how to evaluate adequately drugs in order to uh, have a, a reasonable uh, uh, view of what will be the impact in uh, current care situations. Uh, and hence the importance of uh, early uh, discussions with the applicants, and I suspect this is one of the reasons why the HDA is pushing with others on these early uh, uh, discussions with applicants at the beginning of phase three or even before starting the phase three. First point. Second point you raise, which is very relevant, is the re-evaluation after a while. So once the products obtain the circumstances in to access to the market is what will be the real impact. And the fact that uh, the HIS has asked since many years and more and more uh, additional information in order to uh, secure the results and in order to have the guarantee that results from clinical trials uh, were in fact observed in real life circumstances. And sometimes we have big surprises because the populations are not the same, uh, because uh, uh, the compliance of the patients is not the same as in clinical trials. So there are many reasons uh, for which the, the, we can have different impacts between clinical trials and real life. To give some examples, if, if we take, for example, uh, the case of the statins, uh, I, I would say very general, <laughs> uh, but statins are very uh, heavily prescribed in elderly populations. Populations 
uh, even very early uh, old patients. Uh, in a lot of these prescriptions are in primary prevention of cardiovascular events. Uh, the latest measures in France for statins in general uh, shows that about 50% 50, uh, 50 half of the prescriptions after 75 year olds are in primary prevention. And at the opposite, there is no strong data to support the use at that age uh, of settings in uh, elderly populations. So it's absolutely right. We have to be very careful and very uh, uh, well organized and armed in order to first have uh, adequate clinical evaluation at the first evaluation, at the time of first submission, in order to evaluate the relevance of the data presented compared with the needs of the population concerned, and secondly, if needed, asking for specific studies. Sometimes it's not difficult to conduct studies just to verify the adequacy of the population in terms of indications. It could be short, simple, not expensive. Other times it could be more complex with pharmacopoeia studies in order to reevaluate results in real life uh, circumstances. So I agree on the fact that it's uh, something which is key because everything which will be decided later in terms of we will pay or we won't pay and at what price for which benefit will be based first on the clinical impact and public health impact of the medicines. Could be other products, medical devices, I'm addressing mainly medicines.